Welcome back. The clock is ticking for the United Auto Workers Union and the big three automakers to hammer out a new contract to avoid a potential strike next month. And it doesn't appear to be going great. Doesn't seem like the sides are very close to an agreement at all. With UAW President Sean Fain literally throwing Stellantis' latest proposal into the trash. Joining us now to discuss the latest are auto analyst and host with Auto Line Detroit, John McElroy, and former UAW spokesperson Brian Rothenberg over on Zoom. Thank you so much for both being here tonight. Thank you. Appreciate your time. So, Brian, we'd like to start with you. What do you make of this video? You can't ignore it. Uh, Fain seemed pretty intense. His tone was very serious. Do you think that was more to send a message to the membership or to the big three that he's not playing around here? Well, first of all, Shana, it was very effective communication. You absolutely know where Sean Fain is on the Stellantis proposals. But having said that, a lot of this stuff would happen in the pounding of the table, maybe not throwing it in a garbage can behind the scenes in past years. It's as we've discussed before, it's part of this new uh, type of bargaining where you're doing it very publicly. It started earlier this year with the Teamsters. You know, I've said before, the question becomes ultimately the members decide, does it build expectations? One thing very clear uh, that Sean did with this video, I think, is he made his positions very clear so that at least members know he's fighting. Remember, there's a different way they elect leadership now than when I was at the UAW. It's it's one man, one vote, so it's a, it's an actual election, 50% uh, plus one. So that changes some of the dynamics. John, I want to get your thoughts on this video. I mean, it makes for good theater, but do you believe that the workers really want the head of their union that is representing them in contract negotiations doing stuff like this? Is this effective? I think it's very effective. I think this is some of the most effective communication I've ever seen come out of UAW leadership in my entire career of covering the auto industry. I think the members do like this. It's far more visible than they've ever seen in the past. They know exactly where he sta they stand and where their leadership stands. He's communicating very effectively uh, of what he wants to get across. So uh, I think this is a, a whole new page for the UAW. And as, as Brian just mentioned, uh, the Teamsters taking a very similar tactic as well. What do you think the effect will be, though, in the head offices of the big three? Does this have them shaking in their boots? Are they going to budge on any of these issues? I, I think what they're worried about is that, number one, the UAW members are going to get big raises. It's going to happen. They're, they're going to get a lot, but they're not going to get everything that Sean Fain's asking for. I don't believe uh, full pensions will come back. I don't believe retiree health care will come back. I don't believe a 32-hour work week's going to happen, or a jobs bank, for that matter. So the danger, and, and Brian alluded to, to this too, is raising expectations among the membership that we're going to get all this, which I think is very unrealistic. Big raises? Absolutely. More profit sharing? Yes. Shorten the time to go from a temp to a full time? Absolutely. But some of these other things are not going to happen. I think I'm afraid this is what the management's worried about, is the rank and file's going to think we're going to get all of this. Mm -hmm. Brian, we still have a little more than a month before the contract expires. Do you think there's been any movement here, or do you think it's really going to come down to the final week to potentially avoid a strike? Well, these, these things always come down to the final weeks. As John will tell you, when I worked there, I would be uh, spending my September, October, and November in the office until midnight or one o'clock many days just uh, dealing with the ongoing bargaining and it comes to a pressure point. I do think there's still a good likelihood of a strike and I also think that if you look at contract history in recent years uh, it's more than likely that a contract can be voted down. I don't think that's bad for the membership or doesn't really say much about the UAW leadership. They bargain the best contract they can get but it is about the membership making a decision. And ultimately, if a contract gets voted down, they, they get more of what they want. The, the uh, flip side is all of this is contingent on protecting jobs and making sure there's job growth with the EVs and everything else. So is there profit? Is there room to move? Yes. Uh, but at the same time, the union has, is focused on making sure people have jobs. And John, where do you stand on this? So far, in recent weeks, every guest that we have had on to discuss this topic has said they do believe a strike may well happen. Where do you stand on uh, Add me to the list. I'm, I'm quite sure there's going to be a strike, and here's why I say that. Uh, 
if there is not a strike, Sean Fain's base, and it's a small base, remember, you know, 86% of the union membership did not even bother to vote in the election that got him elected. And so only half of them, or barely half of them, voted in favor of him. So he's got a very small base. He's got to prove to them he went as far as he possibly could. So if there's no strike, that base, I believe, is going to say, hey, you could have got more. You could have gone for more. And that's why I believe there's going to be a strike. The question is, is it a couple of weeks? That's manageable. If it dra drags on for months, it could be very damaging to the yeah. automakers. It certainly seems like they're far apart. I mean, Sean Fain called it a slap in the face and throws that in the trash can last night from Stellantis. So we will see how this progresses here with about five weeks to go here before it expires. Thank you both for being here tonight. Former UAW spokesperson Brian Rothenberg and Auto Line host and analyst John McElroy, thank you so much for being here tonight. And of course, we'll continue to follow the latest developments between the UAW and the auto workers, the big three. Thank you.